Hi, we're going to be going to Prague. Uh, the National Institute of Mental Health in the Czech Republic is a state research institute with a broad range of research and clinical activities, including psychedelics. The Cyrus Foundation for Psychedelic Research was established for the support of research and study of psychedelic substances. The main aim of the Endowment Foundation is to support research teams and workplaces. I'm going to now go over to Prague. <laughs> So hello everybody, it's a pleasure to share with you a bit of uh, our progress on a study that we want to conduct in the Amazon with indigenous people with ayahuasca. So first of all, what is ayahuasca? Ayahuasca is a psychoactive brew that is made by indigenous people for ritual purposes and it's made of plants, Panisterosis carpi, which is the ayahuasca or wine itself that contains beta-carbolins, and from Cicotria viridis or chacruna that contains DMT or dimethyltryptamine, which is the main psychoactive compound. Why we are interested in ayahuasca? Uh, it's mainly because the fact that psychedelic drugs of which ayahuasca is part of are today intensi intensely studied as potential antidepressant drugs with a fast onset of action. Why psychedelics and depression? So let's first go to the past, to 1960s and 70s, where LSD, mescaline, psilocybin and other drugs were studied extensively in large populations of healthy volunteers and patients. What was the most important finding of this study was that in most of the patients, 40 to 9%, 91% of patients showed an improvement of depression and anxiety after treatment with LSD or mescaline. So already at that time the Western science recognized that there might be some potential of psychedelics in treating depression. However, most of the psychedelic drugs have been banned since 1970s and were not used anymore in clinical trials until recently. Another drug that is now in the center of interest of many scientists in relation to antidepressant effects is dissociative anesthetic ketamine. Ketamine during the last decade in many trials showed a rapid onset of antidepressant effects in treatment resistant patients. However, these effects do not last more than 7 to 10 days and then typically disappear. Ketamine has been also recently registered in an intranasal spray as an antidepressant drug and has been marketed both in the US and European market. More recently, the psychedelic research with certain psychedelics has been revived and one of the most intriguing findings that have been published is a finding of Robin Carhart Harris who showed that psilocybin could have similar rapid onset effects on depression in severely and resistant patients but in contrast to ketamine, that these effects uh, appear to uh, remain much longer, up to three months, and based on their follow-up study in some patients, up to six months. Based on these data, there are several companies now running clinical trials with psilocybin and depression, and these studies have obtained a uh, label of a breakthrough therapy in the US. Ayahuasca has been also studied in relation to its potential antidepressant effects. 
this study is one of potential interest because despite of the fact that they have also shown antidepressant effects of ayahuasca, they have for the first time also showed that the patients were not pure depression or suffering pure depression, but that many patients were also comorbid with personality disorder. Probably everybody knows that psychedelics can induce experiences which are very pleasurable at one side and at the same time they can induce very anxious experiences. And what is believed in general that one of the most important factors that play a role is set and setting. So, so what is set and setting? Set is like a mindset of the person that is undergoing the psychedelic experience and setting is the place or the environment where the psychedelic experience happens. And these two factors are underlying the unique phenomenology of each experience. Here is an example of a therapeutic setting which is in our institution, in National Institute of Mental Health near Prague, on the left side. And it's obvious that uh, this setting is very different to what we know from uh, how the traditional setting of indigenous people can look like. So let's have a look how the set and setting might influence the effects of psychedelics. So first of all I'd like to mention a scale that is used to measure the effects of psychedelics. The scale is called Altered States of Consciousness Scale and enables us to define the phenomenology of each experience. It has three clusters dividing the effects into oceanic boundlessness which are more like positive effects, then a cluster of drag of ego dissolution, which is uh, mainly related to the anxiety and paranoia and let's say unpleasant effects. And the third cluster is visionary reconstruction, which is related to the visual uh, and auditory effects. Uh, like hallucinations and synesthesias. There is also a secondary scale which in fact measures the magnitude of effects. This is a nice work published by Leo Roseman which works in the team of Robin Kahard Harris and it relates to this previous study I have mentioned where psilocybin showed the depressant effects. Uh, this study focused on the phenomenology of experience of patients and uh, on the graph on the right side you can see two lines. One refers to responders and the other one to non-responders to psilocybin in terms of its antidepressant effects. Another scale that I'd like to stress in relation to psychedelics is a persisting effect scale that was used by Rolando Griffiths for the first time. This scale, in contrast to the Altered States of Consciousness scale, measures long-term effects of psychedelics that can be evaluated for weeks and even later after the experience. Rolando, uh, these are the questions that are contained in the scale. They are asking uh, on the two valences of each domain, like uh, your appreciation for life has been increased, your appreciation for life has decreased, you feel more personal integration, you feel less personal integration and when put together it gives you a result uh, whether the effects were positive or negative. And based on the findings that have been published by Rolando in 2011, it has been shown that the psychedelic experience of psilocybin increased well-being and life satisfaction at four weeks after the administration 
and also has a positive impact on mood at this time point. Why did I show you the previous scale? In our institution, we are also using psilocybin. We have an ongoing study in healthy volunteers where we measure a lot of parameters. And one of these parameters are, of course, the scales focusing on acute effects and long-term effects. On the right side, you can see the effect of the first uh, half of our volunteers on the altered states of consciousness scale and what is clearly seen that they had majority of positive experiences on the oceanic boundlessness scale which is here they had quite strong visual effects and quite low anxiety during the session the potency or the intensity of the experience was somehow intermediate let's have a look on the persisting effect scale and uh, on this graph what we can see is that psilocybin session compared to placebo session induced only positive changes in all the domains that are contained in the scale so this would be interesting and we might say yes psilocybin in our setting was used uh, well and didn't induce harm to our subjects but recently and these are uh, completely new data we focused on how the acute effects are linked to the long-term effects so we have correlated the altered states of consciousness scale with persisting effect scale and what we can see here on this graph is a very strong positive correlation of oceanic boundlessness during the acute effects of psilocybin with positive mood changes four weeks after the session and that's not all all other domains were positively correlated with oceanic boundlessness this means that if the experience is pleasurable is very likely to have a long-term positive outcome and it technically fits absolutely with what we have seen in the Lior study in depressed patients. So now let's move towards the expedition. So why we want to go to the Amazon and why we want to study something with indigenous people. The reason is quite simple, as we believe that set and setting are crucial for the long-term effects of psychedelics, we have decided to study the effects uh, from those who have the most experience and those are indigenous people in the Amazon who have probably the longest ongoing tradition of ayahuasca use in uh, measures of hundreds or thousands of years. So the main goal of our expedition was to study the acute and long-term effects of ayahuasca on mood and well-being and nature relatedness and on underlying changes in brain activity. The start of our project dates already as back as to 2017. At that time we started to communicate with Centro Takivasi in Peru near Tarapoto as we had some friends working there so we have decided to go there so we traveled local public transportation and we've met people in Takiwasi and we've presented our uh, project and discussed with all people who were there and finally we get to a situation where uh, they didn't want to support our research so uh, we were searching further and in 2015 uh, at psychedelic science conference i meet eduardo schenberg here on the right side and he proposed me that he knows a brazilian shaman from the huniqui tribe called jeva bane who is here uh, on this picture uh, who is interested in some collaborative research eduardo had previously did or done uh, research on ayahuasca 
and uh, it was just in 2018 when we flew to Rio Branco in order to meet all Honikui people and discuss a possible collaboration. Uh, we have uh, arranged together with Ninawa, who is a president, uh, who is a president of their federation, uh, an assemblea where we have presented the project, discussed possible uh, outcomes and benefits for Honikui people, and the result was that uh, they need more time, they need more communication. However, our initial idea how the project should look like was changed. We came to an assumption that uh, not only uh, the scientific study will be done, that there has to be also something that indigenous people will benefit from, and that is a documentary movie and a book, and that uh, this should be a start of a long-term collaboration. Meanwhile, also our scientific activities evolved. We met a scientist, uh, Tom Fraser, and he told us that it might be of interest to study not only one person's brain activity, but it would be interesting to study uh, the brain activity of all people who are participating in the ceremony and to measure something which is today called hyperscanning or uh, a brain to brain interactions. Uh, something which we call interbrain connectivity. In order to strengthen the collaboration with Honikui people, we have decided to organize a conference or a big presentation for public, which was called Science Meets Tradition. And in 2018, we have invited Ninawa as the president of the FEPAC organization, the Association of Honikui People to Prague. We gave some lectures and we also invited Ninawa into our lab where he participated on an EEG trial. He let record himself during the RAPE administration and also went into the MRI scanner. Probably as a coincidence, around the same time I've met on a conference in Brussels Italian psychologist and anthropologist Tania Re. During our discussions on psychedelics, she told me that she is frequently going to Mayantuyaku and that she has a collaboration with Maestro Juan Flores, who is an Ashan Inca leader who built this center. It was quite interesting meeting and uh, she said, well, it is, it is theoretically possible that we might also start some collaboration with people in Mayantuyaku. So, in 2019, we were invited by Honikui people to come to Rio Branco to present our project to the whole Assemblea of Honikui people in order to get the approval. Uh, when we decided to go there uh, and we already started the communication with Tania, uh, we have decided to travel to uh, Rio Branco and then after the Honikui Assemblea that we will move to Peru, to Bucalpa and to Centro Mayantuyaku to adjust the collaboration with Maestro Juan as well. Uh, as with indigenous people, everything is not very predictable. Uh, when we finally got the tickets and planned to arrive to Brazil, they told us that the date of the Honikui Assemblea has moved and uh, that it doesn't matter that we have a new plan and that we will go uh, with one of their leaders, Nashima, to a village on the Peruvian border, Brazilian Peruvian border, which is called Santa Rosa do Purus, and that we will uh, see the local life of people there and that we will drink ayahuasca with them. So that was definitely a nice change and uh, with some flight cancellations and difficulties on the way we finally uh, traveled there and arrived there. This uh, place where Honikui uh, people from Santa Rosa do Purus under the leadership of Nashima, who is here on the left side, are performing or doing ayahuasca ceremonies. Uh, on the right side is our crew. And on the left side, as we are scientists, we already brought the equipment 
with us in order to test it in uh, these very special conditions with high temperature and humidity. After successful participation at two ceremonies with ayahuasca with Honikui people and experiencing their amazing medicine of rapé, uh, we moved to Peru and traveled to Mayanzuyaku, where we've met Maestro Juan Flores, who is here uh, on this right photograph together with Tanyare and again presented him our project and participated on one ayahuasca ceremony. Uh, Juan Flores was also open for uh, adjusting a collaboration with us and showed us uh, a lot of things related to uh, the medicine and plants that they are using in Centro Mayantuyaku. So, uh, we are scientists, therefore it's obvious that we bring our tools always with us and uh, as we participated on the ayahuasca sessions we also uh, decided to evaluate the altered states of consciousness scale the one i spoke at the very beginning that describes the acute effects of psychedelics and what is clearly seen on this graph is that there was again very little anxiety uh, but there was not that much of oceanic boundlessness, but there were quite some visual effects. So these are pooled sessions of all of us together throughout the whole journey. Uh, shortly after we went back to Czech Republic and other countries, uh, Honikui had the assembler and uh, Eduardo Schenberg traveled there, he presented the project there that was the biggest Huniqui Assembler and uh, they approved our project collaboration with Huniqui so uh, this is probably for the first time ever that the whole tribe approved a scientific study in connection with Western scientists And uh, let's have a look on some data that we have collected there. Uh, we were trying to record our own EEG uh, during the session with Honikui. Unfortunately, the equipment failed because of overheating. So uh, we do not have any data from there, but we succeeded to record, uh, to record uh, EEG of myself uh, during the session in Mayantuyaku. Here on the right side you can see myself wearing the EEG cap in Maloka during the ayahuasca ceremony and on the left side we are explaining what is EEG about to Maestro Juan Flores. So what was my experience like? Uh, it was very interesting because uh, for me uh, at this particle session it was quite biphasic effect of ayahuasca. During the first part of the experience I was very disorganized. There was lots of short-lasting visions coming through my head and uh, uncontrollable thoughts. But then uh, after about one hour or hour and a half I get to a state where I was uh, almost like a observer of visions and ayahuasca was sending me messages or uh, clear visions that I could understand. I was able to easily focus on these and the disorganization was not present anymore. This is how my experience looked like in terms of altered states of consciousness scale. The experience was mainly visual, there was not much other uh, other symptoms there except of insightfulness that was coming through these visions I had. We were recording EEG and uh, this is an example of an EEG waves how they look like on the left part of the EEG presentation we can see an EEG with eyes open which is quite desynchronized 
here is a nice ice blink. On the other hand, on the right side, we see an EEG, typical EEG example with eyes closed, which is characteristic with so-called alpha rhythm, which are oscillations between 8 to 12 hertz and typically present in the occipital region. It is known that the alpha rhythm appears when you, when you are well relaxed and that some people who are more anxious, let's say, uh, have so-called beta rhythm with eyes closed, which is present here. So what ayahuasca did to my EEG? Uh, this is a map of the EEG activity and uh, the alpha band is here 8 to uh, 12 hertz. There's an alpha 1 and alpha 2 band. And what ayahuasca did during the first part of the experience, during the first 70 to 80 minutes, that my alpha activity, which I had with my eyes closed, was dramatically decreased. And this effect is something that we know also from all other psychedelics. They just simply decrease the alpha activity. But what happened later on, around uh, after 80 to 90 minutes, uh, was a complete opposite. The alpha activity increased in the faster part in the alpha 2 activity. So uh, during the first part my EG was desynchronized, however during the second part of recording the EG was hypersynchronized. And that's quite novel finding, I believe no one else have described that before. And it was very surprising to this is a different presentation of the same data. This is a spectrogram. And what we can clearly see here that this is what ayahuasca did during the first part of my session, where we can see the decrease of the alpha activity. The full color refers to baseline. So there was a decrease of the alpha activity and shift towards the beta activity, which in fact equals to the desynchronization. Uh, of my EEG, but then uh, later on at 90 minutes uh, it led to an increase or hypersynchronization of the alpha activity to rebound of alpha activity. There was also a shift in the peak frequency for about 1 hertz, which then returned back to uh, my standard alpha activity, which is around 10 hertz. What is also interesting here is that there was an increase of delta activity. Delta activity is not normally present uh, much in, in the uh, EEG uh, when we are awake, but is typically present when we are sleeping in a deep sleep. Uh, relatively recently, uh, our friend and colleague Chris Timmerman published a study on DMT, which is the main active component of ayahuasca, uh, that the phenomenology of DMT effects is very similar to what we know about dreaming. And taken into account that uh, during my ayahuasca experience, during the second half, I was clearly having visions and I was still uh, very affected by ayahuasca, I might speculate that this, uh, this uh, spectrogram uh, might reflect something like lucid dreaming. Uh, hard to say and needs to be explored in the future. So I showed you some bits of uh, what we did during the past years. And we have also uh, commented or I have also commented on the fact that we agreed with many three people that we will make a documentary movie on what we are doing together with them. And uh, it's been maybe two years already. We have joined with one of the directors, Czech directors. David Charlek, uh, with whom we started to operate, he will join us for the preparations and uh, made some uh, footage already. Uh, the documentary got a funding uh, from the Czech Kinematographic Fund already and there are negotiations also with HBO and possibly Netflix uh, on presenting the document. So let me show you some short footage from our last trip 
to Brazil and Peru. And also to let you know that you can do your work uh, without any hurry uh, in the way that you need with the time required so that you can do a, a very special and great job. Thank our Nishipan. Agradecer também a Rainha da Floresta. To thank the Queen of the Forest. E todas as forças da natureza. And to thank all the forces of nature that they help us and guide us in this session tonight for uh, love and understanding. Which, which is which lobe? <laughs> Super synchronized, like... And I, can you see I have no muscle artifacts there? So if there is something going on in Gamma, it's not muscle. I can imagine because I felt relaxed as well, like completely, at the end of the session. It was alpha. Yeah. But it's not centrally, so... so. And it's not frontally again, the beta peak is occipitally. What does it mean? Yeah. What does it mean? Well, we got something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is which lobe? <laughs> Super synchronized, like, like I can see I have no muscle artifacts there. So if there is something going on in gamma, it's not muscle. I can imagine because I felt relaxed as well, like completely at the end of the session. It's alpha, yeah. but it's not centrally, so, so, and it's not frontally again. The beta peak is occipitally. What does it mean? Well, we got something. Sure. So finally, I'd like to thank to all people who are participating already on our study. There are obviously not everybody, but uh, the most important members of the expedition and the team. And I would like to thank you for your attention. And if you are interested and you can support us, we would be very happy. You can do it via bank transfer or you can also support us by a uh, Bitcoin currency. Eduardo Schemberg, I'm a neuroscientist from Brazil. They are uh, leaders from the Unicuin people in the Amazon. And we brought them to see the neuroscience lab and how do we study the brain 
under the effect of ayahuasca and similar substances. Experiment the design of the Nahrávali EEG u účastníků původních vlastně rituálů nebo původních ceremonií. Se nás acreditáš, že 100% que isso não é bom, eu não estaria aqui nem o outro Runicuin. Sofos? Mira, é só. Důvodem, proč vlastně psychedelika zkoumáme, je výzkum schizofrenie. Massive rise in mental disorders in people, they lose connection with the meaning of life. This indigenous knowledge can be really, really relevant. Ayahuasca, ela é capaz sim de curar a mente humana, de fazer essa limpeza. My jsme se snažili tu místnost trošku přizpůsobit tomu, aby to prostředí bylo příjemné a trošku připomínalo to rituální prostředí. Pro harmonizovat tudo isso, pro chegar no entendimento, pro juntar esses conhecimentos e beneficiar alguém. We are hopeful that by putting these two systems of knowledge to work together, everybody can gain uh, a lot. Tomáš vždycky snil o něčem takovém, jako vyrazit do džungle vlastně původnímu obyvatelstvu. 